Welcome back to Oxygen Not Included. My name is Nilos and we are going to talk today about how to conquer the second planet. We want to arrive on the second planet. This, in my case, it looks like this. And we want to get it to a uh, more workable solution, such as something like this. This is a much more set up place and it looks wonderful and is now super controlled. So we're going to be starting from the beginning and work our way on the principles, parameters, uh, decisions and uh, sequencing and priorities of what to get there. So let's go on back to more of the start and then look at how we get to this beautiful base. So the very first thing we need to talk about is when to go there. There are three principles that I've come up with in terms of when you should start taking another planet. The one is sooner rather than later. The sooner you get it up and running, the sooner you have two bases operational. That's good. The second thing is your first planet must be stable. So if your first place is not stable in terms of food, oxygen, and just general living space for the dupes, then you're going to be having a tough time going back and forth. And that goes to the third one, which is the harder priority, actually, and that is you must have the mental capacity to cope with it, because suddenly you manage two bases, and if you're putting out fires on both at the same time, well, that's not going to be a good time. So uh, that is the balance. In this case, I'm going to go there around uh, around cycle 100, and that's way too early for me. I find out uh, that's uh, too early for me to cope with it because this current base is not stable. But we're going to be looking there, just having a glance, and then we'll come back and go back at a later time for when we're actually ready for it. But let's uh, go there. The first thing we need to talk about is uh, how to engage with the second planet. In uh, space.dlc, there are multiple planets. We don't have anything on the second planet. It's completely empty. We don't have anything. But we do have some special buildings. This is a teleporter, transmitter, teleport receiver. So they, they are correspondingly on both planets. On top of that, we have uh, this one, which is the supply teleporter input, where you can put stuff in. It has uh, a liquid, a gas, and a solid uh, input. So you can get transfer things between the, between the different planets very easily. And there's also one the other way around, that's the output. So you can bring things back and forth, and that's kind of how you work on these. What you transfer back and forth, that's really up to you, and also depends on what you have available on each planet. Uh, the next thing we want to talk about is who to send. So let's have a look at our skill set. And um, I would say uh, what you're really looking for in terms of this is you definitely want someone who has super hard digging, because you need to be able to dig through obsidian on the second planet. There's probably going to be some obsidian. You absolutely must be able to dig through abyssalite. So having someone who's a high digger, but also very low in terms of uh, overall skills, you don't want them to have, like, say, here, like 13, because you're not going to be able to sustain a 13 morale on the other side, and then they get stressed out, or even someone like St. Cabbage. St. Cabbage here is a perfect example, because digging and construction, absolutely amazing, but all of this is completely useless on the second planet. So if you have someone like this you want to send, well, good time to use the skill scrubber. So uh, let's uh, throw in a skill scrubber and throw St. Cabbage into that one. So we are giving uh, St. Cabbage a good shake, so that they're coming out. So what I want to do is digging, very hard, super hard digging and super duper hard digging as well. On top of that, we can do construction, more construction, and this one might actually be useful. But if we go all the way up there, you can see we are going to end up at very high. So I'm just going to give you one, and then your admiral needs seven. And uh, we will get up here eventually if we need, when we need it, we'll just pump it up there. But until then, let's actually just see, we are going to get uh, St. Cabbage with a new cab. There we go. And going into uh, our teleporter, so we are ready to send the first dupe over to the other planet. Uh, here is a thing, by the way. Uh, I'm going to just uh, deselect. You maybe don't want to send someone in who is tired and wants to go with bladder 89%. And if they are hungry as well, you might want to wait until they have uh, slept and uh, eaten. And it's morning and St. Cabot, no more hypothermia, all fully uh, managed inputs and outputs. And it is now time for us to head over to the second planet before any silly thing happens. There we go. So you will send someone over here. Uh, be note that uh, you have a cooler a time, time on this. Also very much remember, remember to click that button, otherwise uh, bad stuff happens. And we are now on the second planet. So what are we going to do here? Now it's all about initial priorities. The first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have um, access to the return teleporter. See destination, 
And then you have, now we have the two planets unlocked, like that. And now you're back here. Uh, so what I want to do is, I want to go out. And, I actually don't want to do that. But uh, here, that one, that one. Teen collapse, don't care. Uh, we want to get in here to get, to get to the water. And don't pee on the water, thank you very much. What we can also do afterwards, when you have that, uh, the priority is also getting up to get a to get access to here. This can be a bit difficult because we don't have a lot of materials right now. And I'll just be digging it out. Like that. And then some more. There. And then we can go up there. Uh, what we can also do is we can inspect this and we can then do a, a defrost a friend. Here is a very important point. If you defrost a friend here, you can risk getting a very, very bad dupe they get a some good things but you can't get a dupe that farts for example and then you have a really unfortunate we got stew steve is thawed yeah um so let's see what uh, steve is is like and uh, the, the problem here is that we can actually get someone who is uh uncultured shabby dresser ancient knowledge ancient knowledge is what they get because they are they're, they're being thought it's pretty good but um it's not bad, but they could get something with a fart natural gas and something like that. You'd never want that in your base. Or floral scent, for example, allergic, that kind of thing. So it's a bit of a gamble. Choose that uh, if you want or not. The disadvantage is also now that when I send one of them back, it's going to go on a cooldown. And as it goes on a cooldown, then we don't have the option of, of getting the other one in. Uh, that means you can't evacuate all of them at once. So we are going to be uh, doing just a few things. Uh, first thing first, we want to get our... Toilets accessible because they will be peeing on the floor. We have a little bit of food. There's enough food here. If we look at these parts, these are all edible. Uh, so that's basically going to be feed us for the beginning is just getting all of those swamp shards out there uh, here. That's going to be sustaining us aside from the nutrient bars. And uh, once we have that, we have in this case, we have a, uh, our bedrooms down here. That's probably not worth it. So it's probably better for us to just make some make some beds more nearby and uh, just make them in here just just for now uh, also i think over here we have a coal power plant which is too far away but if you have a coal power plant nearby you can start using it but on this place this map we don't really have coal so coal is not really going to get us a very far what we um what we do have in this case this is what you need to look for is how am i going to get solve things well in this case we don't have any slime lung so we, don't have, we do have a lot of polluted dirt and a polluted mud. So that will be our main source of uh, of uh, oxygen will be from... What is it called? The sublimation station. This one. Taking polluted dirt into polluted uh, oxygen. And then we can also use another refinement process to make uh, the sludge press. Where where are you? There. Uh, to make the mud into, into dirt and water. So that's also like a great way of make, getting additional water. So... That's uh, another thing. And then in the, in terms of uh, food, the initial food will be the bug buckets. Those will be the easiest way to get food. And uh, they need a lot of production or polluted water, but that's not really a big deal for us right now. So let's uh, let's scale up and get some, uh, some few more things going on this base. So here we are, we have uh, expanded just a bit more. <clears throat> what we are, our objective is at this point is uh, is very much just to get some space. What I'm gonna do here in this uh, this this planetoid is to just dig down and then have around this level, just have water down here and then just let all the water pour down. Uh, because we have the clean water up here and I'll keep that water being the clean water, then we can have other places for other things. So once we do that, this is just to get some space because we need space for two things. We need space for, well, it's actually technically one thing. We need space for now, we need to make some food so that we can survive here. And we cannot live off of this. We don't have a supportable way. So we need to start some farming. After we're done with the farming, then, or in order for us to do farming, we have to be able to pump water. So we need energy and en or electricity. And electricity comes from ethanol. Ethanol is the best way to do power here. Uh, if you, and on this planet, it is a petroleum generator. Actually works with ethanol as well. Converts either petroleum or ethanol into electric power. And we have lots and lots of ethanol on this planet. So there is absolutely no problem with just using ethanol as our primary power. And the ethanol power is here. This generator is also super good because it generates 2 kilowatts of power. So we can already get to 
low level uh, power plants out of it or two, uh, two electric wires something to note as well is cobalt is the uh, is the metal of choice here and that's what we're going to be using ma uh, majority of the time we also have down here uh, somewhere uh, once we get down breach this we should have some iron ore we should also have a lot of uh, where is that actually let we should have lead there we go lead is super super amazing and uh, that's going to be our main because lead is already a refined metal by from the beginning but it has low overheat temperature so we get this and uh, for everything that we're not going to be overheating and we have copper ore tiles here that's interesting that needs to be taken out as well so let's uh we are going to be starting to dig this and the next thing we want to do is make a a farm and uh, make uh, some power plant as well and this is what the power plant looks like. Very simple. We have a petroleum generator. We have some power, uh, some batteries, and we have two uh, transformers. And they go into just two networks here. One is going to be the pumping. This is super important. This one is pumping the water. Nope, the ethanol back here. And also pumping the water into our bug buckets down here. So that will be our new, new food production at this point. Uh, what we have over here is the rock crusher. We are working on crushing because we need to get some cobalt ore. The reason why is because we also, instead of having a manual generator, we want to get a our first battery, our first uh, smart battery and a pump so that this doesn't run all the time. We don't want to waste, waste that material. In terms of uh, power, this is generating a lot of heat. It's actually kind of unfortunate that it generates it right here. Uh, it's good right now to do it, but definitely these things don't need to be next to each other in, in the long run. We have a m tremendous amount of, of cold on this uh, this planet and then a lot of heat down here. So at some point, we're just going to mix it and hope that it balances out to something more reasonable. So here we have our power plant, the sublimation station. If we look at the sublimation station and how efficient that is, it generates 660 polluted oxygen per second. So that is a bit more than six dupes. So you can compare it to... Uh, the, the algae is uh, 500. So this an algae diffuser, an oxygen diffuser can take can support five dupes, and this one can support six dupes. That's pretty good. But it outputs a uh, polluted oxygen. So you can see here the mix between uh, polluted oxygen and normal oxygen. If they ha are consuming polluted oxygen, they are consuming 30% more because they have yucky lungs. So we will gradually, eventually start cleaning it up as much as possible. Uh, this is also generating a lot of carbon dioxide. Let's confirm. Uh, how much carbon dioxide? Yeah, 500 grams per second of carbon dioxide. That is an immense amount of carbon dioxide that gets spewed out here. You can see the pressure. So we will uh, need to dig down and then get somewhere that we can basically carbon scrub the, the carbon dioxide away from this. Uh, so that's going to be one of the next things as well as looking at now that we have food, we have power. Then the next thing is lavatories. More, uh, yeah better than this this is only one we have three tubes at this point we'll uh, scale up a bit to some more tubes i think uh, so let's make some lavatories and some bedrooms so that things become uh, just a little more civilized around here and so here is the next thing we want to do and uh, this is making the lavatories we've also made a little mess hole so that they can have some play nice trees you can see how much junk is stored everywhere uh, at this point we have some polluted water coming in and then we'll need to hook up the polluted water to the output of this so it goes output and into the water sieve the water sieve will then clean it up go into here and then for some reason i'm going to drop out the clean water that's kind of silly i should uh, do it the other way around but um, at this point i think we'll have enough water to get this flowing so we can just cut this one out uh, no need to have that much water in the in the network we don't want to have it overflowing and then uh, whatever else will come out as clean water. This shouldn't be coming out as clean water. It could be coming out as empty, as blue water. There's no point in using energy and sand to clean up the water and then just pour it in into this location anyway. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Now we have the toilets ready and we can now take the other one and just disable it. Disable that building. There we go. So we don't actually get there. There we go. And they're washing their hands. Everything is flowing. This is just like the normal. And we just send out the excess. So here. That was one thing. The other thing that we want to do is down here. We also want to make sure that we have all the way here. That one getting done. Uh, this will be our carbon skimmer. We do have quite a bit of carbon pressure, carbon dioxide pressure down here. And this is kind of the best place I could, I could make it. So we'll just have a little bit of carbon skimmer. We definitely don't need to make it as big as this, as I've made it here. But it's just nice to get it a, a little... Uh, 
speaker here again. I'm going to put it out here. And hopefully that will be flowing in. And that starts cleaning it up. Clean it up, please. There we go. Filtration medium was made, waiting for. And we can now have the next one's working. And that's the wire overcharging, isn't it? Wouldn't surprise me at all one bit if the wire was somehow overcharging once in a while. But it uh, it works now. And uh, we don't really need that much more. And I can now take out the bridge because we don't need that uh, either. This is uh, the carbon skimmer. Oh, it got some uh, some wrong product to start with because this one was product. Okay, that's that doesn't matter. We'll, be, we'll repair it. And uh, then from now on it'll work as it should. And we'll just slowly skim off the carbon down here so we can get rid of some of this. Oxygen is getting cleaner. Uh, and we'll just keep pushing it out and we'll also break into like new locations of polluted oxygen like this with very high density and they will need to be uh, be converted but we know want to make sure that they sleep in in oxygen and not in carbon dioxide so as you can see slowly steps forward but it gets better than this uh, let's uh, also make sure that we can get rid of some of all of the crap that's lying around because our aesthetics in this location is absolutely disgusting and our facility here is growing, it's uh, getting bigger, and it's looking okay if we just check on various things. Oxygen is looking much better, we have now managed to clean out a lot of the carbon dioxide. All the carbon dioxide that flows over here gets removed immediately. And of course we still have something below ground here, but if I moved it down to this location it would be underwater. Uh, but we can also see that we have uh, harvested out a lot of additional space. We are getting over here, we move some things around. We have now our infinite storage right here. I'm trying to make this always as middle of the of the map as possible. This is uh, not as automated as the other location. This is basically just schedule them all for for just clean up and uh, they'll they'll get working on it. There are only five here, but this is the this is something that uh, when you have two maps, make sure that you always have like low priority you dig and also low priority uh, uh, sweeping things because you will be over on the other map and doing some design work and then coming back and then it's nice to see that they're not all idle but in the meantime they've been just cleaning up the base all nice and good it's gradually getting better like some of the places they spend most of the time is less awful um, and this one something we can just continue to to improve as we as we move along the next big thing uh, for this is uh, to work on some big storage. We need to make some storage for ethanol and or later on for oxygen and no, not for oxygen, for we need to make it for water, ethanol and polluted water so that we have it in clean tanks instead of this down here. Still in terms of, uh, of temperature, it's a very nice temperature. We have cold around us and heat down here. At some point we're going to be uh, mixing all the heat and cold and then hopefully it balances out at that point. And here we are, we are now making our ethanol storage. We, and we've just built it below below ground. Everything is ready for... <laughs> that must be really nasty to get a shower of ethanol. Eh, maybe not. Be a bit slightly tipsy as a result of that. Um, we will be digging this out as well. So basically the idea is now we need to take it down here. I am replacing this one as it stops pumping. And it will go over here and then eventually this line will take over and supplement. This is because it's a bridge into a line that means it's lower priority. Uh, but we now have our our location here. Uh, this one will be set up to get ethanol in case we have ethanol some weird places. Then uh, we can use that for scraping up. For example, as we take these ones out here. Uh, that will be dug out at this point. And then we have just a bit more. And also, if you look at the rest of the map, you can see that things are getting more clean. More and more stuff is putting down put down here. That's 337,000 kilos of uh, storage. Uh, we are at a point when... Uh, when we have now room for building things in the in this location, and we also have a, we want to use this space and this space here for storage for water, uh, so we can start pumping it away from here as well. Now, as we can see, the base here is getting much more structured. We have a very clean setup. A lot of places have been now completely cleaned up. We have built some storage tanks here, and we have a line. Basically, this will just be pumping anything. The first. Uh, goes into here this is not a good idea by the way we need to make sure that there's a filter before this uh, but when right now we know that we're only going to be pumping polluted water so this is actually fine then we'll go up here and then just check if we have some some ethanol uh, because i did have some ethanol down here i have some ethanol right here which is a problem um, but then go up here and go into that the 
this product you want the first of you or the most the most of you will be filtering out first so this gets it to be the polluted water build and then this is going to be the normal water and then whatever rest is out here that could be oil later on or it could be ethanol at this point it can't really be anything else uh, we don't have brine but it could also be brine if we somehow end up with some brine here we have a nice stockpile of ethanol at this point and uh, we have found another ethanol plant up here or ethanol location that we are just slowly emptying there's just a little bit of ethanol down here and there is actually a really cool way to uh, to remove this this is what i am illustrating with this uh, this pump is super selective a pitcher pump so you can actually s pick up whatever you want with this pitcher pump uh, here if you you can come here and then somehow only pick up the ethanol so if i do that one and enable the auto bottle then hopefully we will see someone did you just do that already or am i just am i just that lucky uh, let's see no not quite there we go no more ethanol every ethanol was just pumped up it's such a cool way of uh, getting like little blobs of things uh, of liquids that are stored that you don't want to just uh, destroy you can't just build a little box on this one and then it'll be destroyed but if you don't want to destroy it you can actually do it exactly like that uh, you can also do it if there's a layer on top of something uh, you don't want you can also just put a pitcher pump in and then have that sort of suck up the top layer um, so that's just a little neat little extra trip uh, trick here uh, as we're growing uh, the population we have up to six population here and they just start they just keep harvesting out here what we have here is going to be a sulfur geyser that we absolutely need because we need sulfur to feed the, the biters uh not biters the grub grubs on the other planet and uh, also the grub fruit uh, so you can see they are actually idle so uh, in order for us to not make sure that they're idle we need to make sure that we always just keep sweeping this location this is absolutely amazing how uh, how they sometimes get idle it's the ones that can't dig or build they will be uh, idle so let's get them some uh, some work to do here uh, so they can get that done but as we're filling up these that means it's going to be much more effective what we will be doing is we will be taking a pump here and that will now be pumping into this location because we don't want to make don't want to accidentally get to a position where we where we pump in the clean water into this and then ruin the plants but that's uh that's just something we can we can fix as well and so now we've been uh, working a bit further on this and i've started on the next big project the next big project on this base is all about the cold management you can see we still have a lot of cold up here and we also have a lot of ice uh, sort of stored here and as we sweep it up we'll put it into these boxes also the ethanol is nice and cold we have some minus 11 degrees cold one we also have some wee swords here and there that uh, add some cold and radiation. But what I'm starting to do is now I'm starting to drill down into the hot zone so that I can get some of the heat coming back up here uh, because this is simply too cold to uh, to grow these. Body temperature, they need to be between 20 and 10 and 30 degrees. And these are also getting too cold. So I'm, we're basically getting the position where our entire base has been cooled down by all of the area that we have here. And if we take some of this extreme heat, and just basically let the water, the cold water here, seep down there. You can see it starts to be uh, warmed up. It's now 29 degrees. While over here where it hasn't really breached, it's still, well, 6 degrees. And down here we'll also start. So this is going to be the next big project on, uh, on just getting all of this empty. I want to drill down to this location so that we have uncovered all of these monstrous amount of uh, oil reservoirs. I don't know how this spawned this many but there are a lot of oil reservoirs so oil will not be a problem if we can just get it uh, up and running uh, but that will be a challenge for much later and something i think i'll make another guide for because well you can either do uh, do the sort of prescribed one where you add water and then turn it into uh, turn it into petroleum or you can uh, you can do it in a or you get crude oil out and you can turn it into petroleum or you can do a petroleum boiler there's many different options and all of them are fun and interesting to do so this is where we have, uh, I've also expanded our food production because we were kind of running low with seven dupes running around here. Then we need more food than this. Also expand our power to a second power plant. This will start generating way too much heat that we need to deal with as well. Have a little massage clinic because uh, one of the dupes, that was Mark, was uh, not feeling so well. So he needs a little treatment once in a while. Aside from this, it's a pretty happy little base. We are also going to take a look at the sulfur guys are taming to see how we're going to do that in the meantime you can see we're also just going out here and trying to tap the the next uh, ethanol 
locations because that is at this point our only source of power on this uh, on this planet uh, we'll be switching to oil later on but we uh, we might as well use all the ethanol before that i hope that the, this was useful and you can now see how you can uh, overcome the second base you can also see that we spent about i started at uh, 175 so that's about 70 cycles worth of progress on this one and of course there's a lot of progress on the other planet as well but that's uh, i wanted to focus on one on one aspect of the base so you get a sense of how to control conquer tame the second planet and with this now we can easily just let this go for a bit and then go back and do some design work on the other planet do some design work here and then progress with the other planet if you want to see more then uh, be sure to check my uh, my Twitch streams, I'm streaming this generally Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays on Twitch TV slash Nilos at 8 p.m. Central European time. So uh, do come on over and be part of the design, design process and yell at dupes for not doing what we want them to do. And uh, yeah, uh, keep an eye on the channel for more Oxygen Unincluded, Satisfactory, and other stuff. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care, and as always, stay effective.